Hey there, everyone. It's Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy with the Nautilus Drydocks.com. And uh, by popular request, we are going to be touching today a uh, little hint uh, or trick on how to waterproof uh, a battery. And this could be an iCAD battery, a LiPo battery, uh, almost any battery that you want. It works for all of them. Um, so by popular request, let's get started. So, uh, big thing to understand, you do not typically want to run any battery other than a stilled lead acid battery in the wet uh, without some form of waterproofing on there. Now, I have successfully run uh, lithium polymer batteries such as uh, this little guy here uh, in the wet using a waterproof housing uh, or, or sheath and uh, works exceptionally well. And the good news is if, if something does end up happening, you get a little bit of water in there, um, they're cheap enough that you can just simply redo this process because it's fairly economical to do. So what you are going to need is your battery. In this particular case, it's a 1500 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery. I sell on the dry docks. You're gonna need some uh, heat shrink tubing, clear uh, heat shrink tubing, and it needs to be of a sufficient diameter, obviously, that you can fit the battery inside, like so. Um, but you don't want it to be too big so that uh, it is sloppy when you heat it up. So, so far we've got a battery, we've got our heat shrink. I've cut this to size. We want about an inch uh, sticking out on either side. I'm gonna use some five minute epoxy. And before everybody gets all up in arms, uh, the lower the cure time, the shorter the cure time for epoxy, the more apt it is to absorb moisture. Now, that would be an issue if we were talking about a situation where you were relying on these bonds for a structural uh, bond. This is not the case. We're simply using this to a waterproof. It has no structural duties whatsoever, and uh, it works perfectly fine. By the time these bonds give up or absorbs enough water for it to be a problem, that battery will have been dead for years and years and years. So. I use five minutes because uh, here's quick and they can get on to the next step. Last thing you need is a uh, heat gun. Uh, if you don't have a heat gun, you can try to use something like a propane torch, but um, obviously not the best idea. You do not want to overheat your battery. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to shove the battery in the heat shrink and uh, basically we are going to heat it up using our heat gun. And uh, like I said, you want to keep that in the middle. Um, you'll notice that this heat shrink is pretty thick stuff. Uh, the thicker it is, the more protection it will offer to the battery. And uh, lithium um, does exciting things in water when uh, they interact together. So you don't want uh, anything to happen. And so I. I a more hefty, heavy heat shrink will offer a degree of protection to the battery. Um, stop it from being punctured uh, or anything like that. So I'm just going to heat this up, let this all shrink around it. And again, you'll also notice that this is clear. Uh, and we do that on purpose so that we can see any indication whatsoever of condensation uh, inside, uh, which would be indicative, obviously, of a leak and uh, a problem, which is not anything that we want. Okay, um, we don't want to be doing that for too long. We don't want to cook our battery uh, just enough for the, uh, the heat shrink to shrink uh, around the perimeter of the battery nice and uh, tight. Now that we have this done, um, we're going to start probably on, on this end. Uh, we're going to mix up a batch of five minute epoxy, uh, pour it in the top, and uh, that will act to seal the one end. All right, my uh, epoxy has been uh, mixed up and uh, I'm gonna pour it into the opening at the top here. And uh, basically what we wanna do, just get the whole thing in there and we're gonna kinda of swirl it around. We're gonna pull the wires left and right and up and down and we're gonna make sure that all of that epoxy completely coats everything in there uh, all of the wire ends the ends of the batteries it gets in you know to that heat shrink uh, and all of that stuff 
And uh, the reason we're using epoxy here um, as opposed to like RTV is that uh, RTV does not flow whereby this does. It'll get into all the nooks and crannies and seal tightly around the perimeter of the wires. Um, and, but it's also thick enough that it's not going to flow into the actual battery uh, itself. It'll stay fairly contained. So I've got that in there. And now, like I said, I am just going to kind of swirl everything around inside that uh, heat shrink, making sure that it's coated. And again, the good thing about this is this uh, clear heat shrink, you can actually see it, you know, forming up against the um, sides. So I'm gonna pull this around, we're gonna jam some, Let's see if we can get a little bit more in here, we'll pour it down the, the side of these wires. So again, grab the wires, push the wires apart, make sure everything is flowing uh, in between and around, um, and especially these, uh, these balancing cables because there's four of those, and uh, we just wanna make sure that all of that epoxy flows around uh, every part. So, that's been filled. The um, epoxy is going to uh, kick off here now, and uh, once it does, we can flip it over and uh, do the same to the other side. All right, and that's it. Uh, basically, you are done. Actually, maybe Jason, can you grab me a hobby knife? Um, the only thing left to do, and this is obviously for aesthetics and, uh, and room only, is you can actually uh, use a sharp hobby knife and trim any excess heat shrink that you have. And um, that will just make things a little bit more professional uh, a little bit more organized and um, there you go do the same thing on the uh, other side and now you have a fully waterproof uh, battery again in this particular case uh, lithium polymer battery um, I would recommend dunking this in a sink uh, tub or uh, test tank in advance of uh, running it in your boat Throw it in the bottom, let it get nice and deep, uh, you know, see if it's going to leak and you'll look, you'll see it uh, in that uh, clear plastic. So uh, at least before you put it in the boat uh, and potentially lose it, you will know in advance. So there you go. A uh, little tip from uh, the RC sub guy on how to waterproof your um, batteries for your remote controlled submarine. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, by all means, subscribe. I've got lots of videos coming out on a regular basis. Uh, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocs.com. Thanks for joining me, and we will catch you next time.